Welcome back to 360 Comics. My name's Joe, and today I'm bringing you part three of our Bronze Age collection unveil featuring all of the DC comics. If you're enjoying this content, please support the channel by hitting that subscribe button, ringing the bell for notifications, giving us a thumbs up for the like, and leaving a comment down below. Don't forget to go follow on Instagram as well and enter our 5,000 follower giveaway where you can win a Spawn comic bundle. And don't forget to check out parts one and two of this collection haul as well as four and five when they come out later this week. You can find the links to the other videos about this collection in the description below. And in case you haven't checked them out yet, I'll uh, tell you a little bit th about this collection. I purchased this off the original owner who was collecting during the later part of the Bronze Age um, into the Copper Age, mostly bronze though, and uh, they were buying completely off the news rack uh, for the most part. I think there's one, actually I, there is one book that is a direct edition book, but the vast majority of them are these newsstand editions with the barcodes at the bottom. So let's kick this off for the DC Comics. Just like myself, this collector was much more into Marvel than they were DC, and uh, I'd say probably, definitely less than 20% of the collection was DC, probably more along the lines of like 12 to 15%. I didn't specifically count out, but you'll see, um, you know, four of the videos are Marvel books, whereas this one video is all of the DC keys. And uh, we'll kick it off here with some Justice League. This is number 189, and it has a fantastic Starro cover, Starro appearance, and... Uh, this character, obviously this year with the release of the second Suicide Squad movie, or the, the reboot rather, it's not really a sequel, it's uh, more of a reboot, um, this character gained a lot of popularity, and people like to, you know, grab what they see on the screen, and Starro's first appearance is a pretty unobtainable book for most people because it's also the appearance, the first appearance of the Justice League of America. That is a pricey book, obviously. So what people usually do is they go for um, great Starro covers. And it seems that people have been gravitating to not only this one, but also the next book on our list. I think this one, the second one, more than, uh, more than 189. This is the, the very next book. In the run there, um, 190, and in, in my opinion, this is like the best Starro cover. Um, e e even including Starro and Justice League's first appearance, I think this cover is better, in my opinion. Um, Starro has uh, its mind control starfish on all the faces of the Justice League members, and I actually found a bunch of copies of this book Um in a dollar bin, I think I got nine copies out of uh, a dollar bin a couple months ago, and here was another one for me. Um, pretty, pretty decently high grade copies for um, some Bronze Age books that were not bagged and not boarded. And uh, like I said, Star Wars is pretty popular right now due to the movie. Uh, next up is number two oh eight, and this is uh, one of the books from the Crisis Run. I think it's book three. Yeah, book three. Um, that's really the only significance here, I believe. I don't think there's anything, any first appearances or anything, but, um, you know, just a book from a really popular run, which, uh, you know, makes it a, a key book in a sense. Um, next up is number 220 from that same run, Justice League of America. This is an origin story of Black Canary. I think this character was recently cast or something for a show. I'm not sure if they actually made their her premiere yet, or um, if she's just been cast. I, I'm not good at keeping up with the DC stuff, because most of it I don't watch. But, um, yeah. Origin story of Black Canary. A popular character people like. Why not? Just a nice little minor key. Um, couple issues later, 228. This is the return of Martian Manhunter. Um, I guess he was uh, out of the comics for a while, but he's got a great triumphant return as well as a cover appearance here in uh, this Justice League book and for that it ends up uh, you know being a minor key. Uh, that's it for the Justice League and we're going to move on to the Soul Action Comics book. There was only one 
book from Action Comics that made this list because I only pulled out the keys. There was a bunch of Action Comics, but not a lot of Bronze Age stuff is uh, is keyworthy um, from from Action. But uh, we got the first appearance of the I believe it's the second Brainiac. Um, not the original one, but, uh, first appearance of the second one, it's a pretty cheap key. It's not, you know, it's a five, 10, $12 book, depending on grade, nothing super crazy. Um, it's got this kind of, I honestly find this to be kind of an annoying anniversary thing up here. This is, uh, yeah, 45th anniversary. No, thanks. I know a bunch of the DC books have that and I, I don't. I don't like the appeal of it. Um, some people like this kind of thing, you know, announcements and things like that on, on the front cover. I'm not a fan. Um, not a huge fan of Superman either, but, uh, you know, just a minor key to show you. This next book I like, despite it being very low grade, having some marker on it, someone decided to uh, color in Flash's eyes uh, blue. At least it's blue to match the blue up here, but uh, we've got, what is this, Flash... Oh man, I forget the number. It's like 164 or something. It's a Flash origin story from the Silver Age. Pretty cool cover with uh, Flash on the cover of a newspaper. Um, kind of a, a double cover there. We got a cover of a newspaper and the cover of a comic. Um, but yeah, anyway, just a, a nice Flash origin story. Um, like I said, it's very low grade. This probably was one that... The, uh, the owner of this collection didn't buy off the rack at the time because this is significantly older than most of these books. This might have been a back issue bin pickup. Um, probably pretty cheap considering the marker on the Flash's eyes. Uh, next one is a book that I've, I've never found in the wild before. I actually rarely see this book anywhere. Um, but it's a nice little minor key. The first book of the run, we got Batman and the Outsiders number one here. And uh, this is a run I think a lot of people kind of gravitate to because it's a pretty affordable run if you want to collect the whole thing and read it. And, you know, Batman's a popular character, team up with the Outsiders here, you know, kind of cool stuff to read. Um, so I, I think people go for that, um, you know, just those affordable runs to pick up. I, I know I do the same myself. Uh, as a Marvel guy, I've got a almost complete run of X-Factor and New Mutants. Both pretty affordable runs uh, until the end of the New Mutant stuff with uh, Cable and um, uh, Deadpool. Um, moving on now, we got uh, Firestorm number 24. This is the first appearance of Blue Devil. And this, man, this looks like a, just a classic Bronze Age book with the border and everything. The, the you know, the, the colors. Just, it looks so Bronze Age to me. Um, like I said... New stand, just like all the rest of these. First appearance of Blue Beetle. Uh, not Blue Beetle. I hope I didn't say Blue Beetle the first time. Blue Devil, that's what I meant. Um, moving on now, we got a bunch of Teen Titans books. And uh, we'll see what we got here. Bum -bum. We got a Teen Titans X-Men crossover. This was in my X-Men video, so I'm not going to dwell on it right now. Basically, just a crossover between the two teams. Two of my favorite teams. Um, actually, my favorite my favorite uh, Marvel team and my favorite DC team doing a crossover. I'm definitely going to read this one before I, uh, before I let it go. I might even hold on to it if I really like it. But uh, here's an annual from Teen Titans as well. This is annual number two. Two, and this one has been, uh, you know, pretty popular recently. We've got uh, the first appearance of Vigilante, and uh, he is confirmed to be in the uh, Peacemaker show, the John Cena show that he got from the Peacemaker character from Suicide Squad. Um, you know, this this book went from kind of being like a five dollar key to being like fifteen or so dollars, maybe twenty in high grade. Um, you know, nice little one to have, given that uh, he's getting his own show. Um, there's also a Peacemaker, or uh, sorry, a Vigilante solo series um, that came out shortly thereafter, and uh, the number one from that is good to pick up as well. Uh, speaking of solo series number one, we've got a, a, a little spinoff from Teen Titans here. We've got Cyborg number one. This is a part of a, a four-book miniseries. 
um, you know, featuring, showcasing the characters. And the, the, a bunch of the characters had these from Teen Titans where they had like a, a solo spin-off miniseries or a, a book or two. So uh, this one was Cyborg's book. Um, going into the actual run of Teen Titans now, we've got number 32. This is the first appearance of Thunder and Lightning. Not a huge key, but, uh, you know, just something to have from that run. And uh, I, this is, again, a very affordable run. Obviously, there's a couple big keys in there, but most of these books are, uh, are pretty cheap. Um, going on now to number 30, 38. Yep, number 38. That is the origin story of Wonder Girl, Donna Troy. I really like her character in Titans. I think that the actress does a phenomenal job. And, um, you know, she's actually one of the, the best the best actors in the show, in my opinion. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the Titans show. I think season three makes the watching the first two seasons worth it. But, um, you know, maybe that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm just uh, really into those characters. But anyway, um, moving on. Next book is number 39. And this is the last appearance of Dick Grayson as Robin. Uh, he soon takes up the mantle of Nightwing after this issue, a couple issues later. And uh, it's a really cool cover. Really like it with the, the Robin suit hanging up slash on the ground and him walking away from that Robin suit. Moving on to the next thing in his life. Um, next up is a couple issues later, number 41, a minor key as well. The death of Brother Blood. Nothing super significant, and deaths in comics usually aren't too big of a deal because pretty much everyone is either they're either killed off because they're not popular and they never come back, or they they're killed off and then are brought back at some point. So deaths tend not to be significant, as we saw by the death of Superman, which was supposed to be you know the biggest thing ever, and uh, ended up being a real flop of a book. Um, Next up is number 43. This is part of the Judas contract. Probably the best um, the best story arc, in my opinion, in this run, uh, the Judas contract. And this is the first appearance of Jericho, who, uh, you know, is the son of Deathstroke. Um, if you watch Titans, great portrayal of Jericho. Um, switched up the character a bit for the television show, as they do pretty often. Uh, but I think they did a great job with it. A um, couple issues later, number 51 here, we got, um, this is the first cameo appearance of Azrael, and by the way, this is the last Teen Titans book until the end, there is one more bigger key at the end, you can probably guess what it is, but uh, I'll make you wait to see it. First cameo appearance of Azrael there, and we'll move on to the next group of books. And we're going to breeze through these DC books. There's not a whole lot of them. We got All-Star Squadron number 23. This is the first appearance of Amazing Man. What what better what better name has there been than Amazing Man? We had Wonder Man, we had in Marvel, we have Wonder Woman, we've got Superman, Amazing Man. Uh, I think it's a terrible name. But anyway, um, it is a key nonetheless. If you're into Amazing Man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. A um, couple issues later. Actually, one issue later. Um, number 24 in this uh, in this run. Uh, All-Star Squadron. This is the first appearance of Brainwave Jr. First appearance of Brainwave Jr. there. Um, you know, just a minor key. Um and then we got Legions of Superheroes. We got a couple of these keys. This one's interesting. This is number 298. And this book has a preview for the character Amethyst. Not a very popular character. This is uh, Amethyst's, Amethyst's first appearance in comics. Um, honestly, you can find Amethyst number ones in dollar bins all over the place. So not a very big deal here. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, this next one's kind of interesting. Uh, number 300, this is an anniversary edition of Legion of Superheroes with that that top. Not not a fan. Not a fan. Um, but this book has a centerfold that apparently has Garfield the Cat in it. Um, I actually, I didn't look. I looked at the centerfold is there, uh, which it is, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't look for Garfield. Um, I, th I think I might open it up and, and look at some point because... Uh, 
I'm interested to see how they portrayed Garfield in this book. Um, the next two books are interesting. They're not listed keys, really, um, but they have something significant about them that some collectors look out for. Um, they are both bondage covers. We've got Wonder Woman 298. We have Wonder Woman shackled up, actually dead and, uh, you know, completely decomposed at this point. Um, thought this is a really cool cover. And uh, given she's shackled up, it's considered a bondage cover, which some uh, some collectors do look out for. Um, same with this next book. This is Lois Lane number 111. Again, this is probably a book that wasn't picked up directly off of the, the stand. This was probably bought from a back issue bin. But a great bondage cover here. We got Lois Lane 111 with her tied down. What's that? Gulliver's Travels, I believe it's called. Yeah, Gulliver's Travels. Uh, kind of an homage to that story where uh, you know, Gulliver gets uh, tied down by... He's like a giant. Uh, well, he's not a giant. All the people are real small. I think. I think that's how it goes. And they, like, tie him down and, and all this stuff. Um, anyway, the next two are from the DC Comics Presents uh, bunch. We've got uh, number 51. And this has, I believe, a preview for um, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, there's a bunch of books that came out the same month as this one that all had the same preview for He-Man. So, you know, not a uh, specifically exciting key issue, but if you're a He-Man fan, this uh, this kind of preview is something that you, you might want to pick up for your collection. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little cheap one to have. The very next issue of Marvel Comics Presents, uh, that's number 52, is the first appearance of a character who, um, you love him or hate him, some people, you know, do one or the other. This is a uh, first appearance of Ambush Bug, who is like DC's version. I've heard him described as DC's version of uh, Deadpool. He, you know, breaks the fourth wall, talks to the audience. Like, I, I think he's cognizant of himself being in a comic book. And, uh, you know, just a, just a kind of a comic relief kind of character like that. Um, I, I don't I don't know too much about the character, but... Uh, some people really love him and look out for ambush bug stuff. And uh, this is his first appearance in uh, DC Comics Presents 52. On to the Green Lantern books. I saved these kind of towards the end because uh, I know Green Lantern is a pretty popular character. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot. There's not a whole lot from this era that is um, of value. Um, we got 190 or sorry, 173 here. This is the first appearance of Javelin who did appear in Suicide Squad. Um, not a huge key, but a, a really cool cover appearance at least, and a uh, you know, first appearance at that. Um, next one is is one of the bigger... This is probably the biggest Green Lantern book that was in there, uh, for sure. This is number 182. This is the issue where Jon Stewart um, becomes the Green Lantern, takes on that mantle. And uh, yeah, you can see a little behind-the-back not revealing cover appearance here. So, uh, you know, pretty cool stuff. Well, I know Green Lantern um, collectors definitely look out for this book um, and try to pick it up in a high grade. Uh, this one, this one's actually pretty sharp looking given that it wasn't bagged and boarded like the rest of this collection. A um, couple issues later, 188, we got a great Jon Stewart cover as well as the first appearance of Mogo, the living planet that is a Green Lantern. The whole the planet is a Green Lantern, which uh, interesting concept. And uh, my buddy Alex, it's only a five page story that includes Mogo, um, but my buddy Alex did read it to me the other day, and I thought it was an interesting way to kind of expand the uh, the Green Lanterns into uh, one of them being a planet. Um, so that's it for the Green Lanterns. We do have that one bigger key. Like I said, there wasn't a lot of DC and not a lot of stuff from around this time period for DC was, um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't very good to be honest. Like obviously their golden age and silver age stuff was great. Um, and then there was kind of a lull during the bronze age, in my opinion, for DC, and really when they started going darker in the, the copper age, kind of like from when Jason Todd was killed off, when they started going in that direction, through, like, Frank Miller writing Year One, and, um, of course, Killing Joke, and Dark Knight, and all that stuff, uh, Alan Moore, more Frank Miller, 
and uh, that's that's when they kind of started resurging and uh, you know doing a better job with their comics. But this era did not have a ton. Unfortunately, Green Lantern 201 is a pretty nice book to have. First Kilowog, but that was not in there. But we got one more, like I said, and it is right here. We got Tales of the Teen Titans. I bet you could guess it if you know about DC. Number 44. I mentioned I had the first, the last appearance, rather, of Dick Grayson as Robin. This is his first appearance as Nightwing. Um, definitely a pretty significant issue, even though Nightwing is wearing this terrible 80s, like, disco getup. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking back then, but uh, I'm, I'm glad that has not been his costume for a very long time, and hopefully we don't see it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tales of the Teen Titans, number 44. Tales of the New Teen... No, it's just Tales of the Teen Titans. I always thought new was in the name. Huh. Tales of the Teen Titans, 44. First appearance of Nightwing, and uh, a great key. I'm a big fan of Robin... Dick Grayson, all the Robins, really, but uh, Dick Grayson's evolution as a character is great. Um, you know, he he takes on the mantle of Nightwing in uh, in Titans, the show. Um, you know, this book it doesn't really do much as far as like spiking crazy in value because there hasn't really been a big DC property like a movie that encompassed Nightwing. I would love to see that someday if DC ever gets uh, things together and does a you know a real universe like uh, like Marvel's doing. I could see them you know picking up some young kid as Robin. And, uh, you know, having him get older and then eventually replaced by a new Robin, Jason, and become Nightwing. That'd be really cool if they did that. But I don't know. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot for them to really start that much over. But anyway, great book. Um, it's, it's in a higher grade. I, if, it, if it was going to get a 9.8, I would be keeping this book. Um, I want this book in a 9.8. I used to have a 9.8 years ago. I sold it. I regret it. I wish I had it back, and I definitely won a 9.8, so what I'm probably going to do is sell this one and uh, eventually try to pick up a 9.8. Anyway, that is all the DC stuff. Um, you guys can go back and watch the first video, which was all the Spider-Man, the second video, which was X-Men and Fantastic Four, and keep a lookout for the... Well, this is the third, so the fourth video is going to be Miscellaneous Marvel. It's a bunch of different characters, as well as some of the... Um, some of the less popular runs, like What If, I shouldn't say less popular, but like the non-character specific runs, like What If and Marvel Team Up and all that stuff. And uh, then the, the, the last one, that's going to be Avengers, Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America, all in one video, as well as a big, ginormous key, a grail, just a major grail. Um, reveal in that, and I'm also probably going to announce a giveaway in that video, a 1,000 subscriber giveaway here on YouTube, so please look out for that video, definitely check it out and enter that giveaway when it's announced, um, stoked about this one, um, yeah, on your way out, please, as always, hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on for notifications, give us a thumbs up for the like, and leave a comment down below, let me know, um, you know, what what other DC books from this era there are to look out for? Because uh, I, I, I didn't find a lot. Like I said, they're, they're just one video worth of DC stuff. Um, but uh, either way, uh, talk to you guys soon. And until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.